is a very popular YouTube video, over three and a half million views. Um, it's not made by me, it's made by the Superconductivity Lab at the University of Oslo. As far as I know, no one on YouTube has given a proper explanation of the physics. And uh, so just watch and uh, then for the benefit of those who know enough physics, I'll give an explanation. Uh, well, one of the things that happens when you uh, cool a superconductor down below its uh, critical temperature is that um, any magnetic field that happens to be passing through the conductor it is um, expelled from it, uh, rather like this. And uh, that effect is called the Meissner effect, and um, it happens provided the field is not too strong. Now, to be exact, we should say that the magnetic field can only exist near the surface to a depth which is characterized by what's called the London penetration depth. And typically that figure will be around 100 nanometers. It's named rather after two brothers, uh, Fritz London and Heinz London. Um, straight away, we know there can be no current inside the material because that would generate an internal magnetic field. And therefore, all cu current is carried in the surface layer. And uh, in this condition, the superconductor is said to be in the Meissner state. And um, I've drawn here um, a couple of graphs to show how the uh, field, uh, external field drops off uh, as you move away from the surface for different values of the London penetration depth, as you can see. Okay, let's think about what happens when you bring um, a magnet up to a superconductor. Right, well, if you uh, think about any um, closed path drawn on the surface of the superconductor, then if you try and change the amount of magnetic flux that goes through, threads through that closed path, then by ordinary, ordinary physics, um, you'll get um, uh, an electromotive force around that path. So it, like a whole lot of batteries okay, driving current around. Now, this remember is a superconductor. So of course, any EMF is going to create an infinite current from Ohm's law. And if you get an infinite current, you'll get an infinite magnetic field. Now, obviously that doesn't happen. But uh, so what, what actually occurs is um, as you bring the magnet up, uh, you'll induce um, uh, surface currents and uh, those surface currents will be just the right magnitude to prevent any change of flux. Right? So it looks effectively as though you've got a mirror image magnet sitting inside whenever you bring a, a magnet up. So if you bring up a north pole, it looks like there's another north pole sitting inside there repelling it. If you bring up a south pole, it looks like it's a south pole. Now pretty obviously, if you think about this, uh, this is going to be unstable as far as magnetic levitation is concerned. Because if you've ever tried balancing two north poles, one on top of the other, you'll see the slightest push and they um, topple over. So pretty obviously that's not what's occurring in the experiment. So there's a bit more to it than that and uh, that's what we'll discuss next. 
Okay, so uh, why does uh, why does everything work in the video? Um, well, this is where another effect comes in. Now there are two t main types of superconductor, known as type one and type two. And um, as you increase the magnetic field applied to a type one superconductor, then at some critical field strength, it suddenly becomes non-superconducting. And of course, when that happens, then the magnetic flux can penetrate it just like it did when it was at room temperature. Now with type 2 superconductors, and by the way high temperature superconductors tend to be type 2, um, the flux can uh, penetrate the superconductor in non-superconducting channels. So um, now these channels by the way um, weakly repel um, one another and they're surrurrounded by um, a supercurrent flow. And uh, this particular state is called the mixed or vortex state. And um, the flux which is trapped in these channels, in fact, cannot move out of the material very easily. And uh, it's because discontinuities in the material tend to pin these channels in place. And uh, here's the uh, magnetization curves for type 1 and type 2 and what they look like. And you can see as you increase the field along here, uh, that's the applied field, then you'll get an equal and opposite, that's why that's negative, uh, magnetic field in, induced in the material. And everything's fine, and for type 1 there's a sudden critical field at which it suddenly becomes non-superconducting and then uh, flux can penetrate just as before. Now with uh, type 2 of course there's a, a lower critical field at which these um, uh, flux channels start to form inside the material and um, gradually as you increase the field strength more and more of the material gets occupied by these flux channels until it uh, resorts to the in, entire thing resorts to being in the normal state at some upper critical value. Uh, here's a diagram showing flux trapped inside a superconductor um, it's quantized in these channels, by the way. And uh, here's a more detailed uh, diagram. Uh, B is the uh, flux density, which you can see rises in these channels. And, uh, and N is the uh, number of uh, superconducting electrons, which of course drops off because these channels are not superconducting. Uh, lambda is the London penetration depth and size, another parameter I haven't talked about, which is called the correlation length. And uh, screening currents uh, pass, uh, circulate around these channels. Uh, here's an actual picture of the channels. Um, as you can see, they form a sort of lattice. And uh, and if you look at um, if you look back at the video now, you'll see that he he presses down with the magnet, which causes the field strength to rise, and that traps flux inside the type two superconductor and puts it into the vortex state. But of course, it's still a sub superconducting, so it still tries to prevent any change in flux passing through it, and that's why it's stable. There's a balance between the attractive force from the trapped flux and any induced repulsive force. By the way, any currents that you get inside a superconductor will last for a long time, in fact, at least 100,000 years. So it really is a superconductor. And um, of course, if you want to lift it, lift that uh, uh, piece of um, superconducting material, you have to trap a lot of flux, which is why he has to push down quite, quite hard to be able to lift it. Um, now the uh, magnetic fields and superconductivity are sort of like enemies um, because superconductivity relies on pairs of electrons with opposite spin and uh, uh, a magnetic field will try to align electron spins and so they don't live very happily together which is why we get all this interesting physics. Um, these flux channels by the way were predicted in 1952 by someone called Abrikosov and for that he got the Nobel Prize in 2003. And if you look, of course, as, as the uh, material warms up, of course, it loses superconductivity and it becomes normal. And uh, uh, that must be near 10 minutes. <laughs> and uh, um, I hope you've at least understood something from this explanation anyway.